The reason I thought about redoing Mr. Scary was kind of my trademark instrumental song. And uh, we basically kept the framework of the original song, but uh, just, I don't know if modernized it is the word, but updated it to a certain extent. It's got the bones of Mr. Scary, but uh, with some embellishments and some of the parts have changed a little bit. Just to make it different enough to make it interesting so you can recognize it, but sort of it has evolved or devolved depending on your point of view. I went to the Four Horsemen School of Guitar, which basically Hendrix, Beck, Clapton, and Page. I was, you know, 16 years old when those records came out, and nobody had heard of these guys. And that's what me and my friends learned on, you know. I mean, this was the records that we would buy these records, we'd put them on our turntables in our bedrooms, and wow, the new Zeppelin record, the first Zeppelin record, first Hendrix record. Stellar players like Paul Gilbert or Richie Kotzen or whoever. I mean, these guys are Gary Hoey, guys that are just phenomenal musicians. That's what we learned. It was Sabbath, the first Sabbath records. It doesn't get any better than that. You don't need a freaking guitar teacher when you got that. It didn't happen overnight. It was just, just a slow evolutionary process of just playing along and by osmosis, just grabbing bits from other people that you're listening to just by playing along with them. I mean, play along with Hendrix records, you know, first three, you know, Axis and Electric Ladyland and Experience and play along with those, play along with Johnny Winter, play along to all the cream jams, you know, the 10 minute jams per side, over and over and wear those records out. Like you're in the band, you know, that's how I used to practice. I played to these records like I was pretending I was in the band, hours and hours and hours. And you sort of get a sense of the feel of what they're doing. And then you sort of internalize that over years and that becomes part of the fabric of your, of your style, I think. It becomes part of your bag of tricks. We're all just sharing, you know? We're all, I wouldn't call it stealing. We just all borrow from each other. And that's the same with music and every other discipline, science, literature, whatever, things that are created, we're all building on the shoulders of our predecessors, you know? The reason I do what I do, what I, what I enjoy about it, is playing with my friends and creating music and the experience of being on the road and the challenges and adversities and hopefully success and sharing that with someone. Because if you have somebody to share it with, what fun is it? My band is like my second family, you know. The challenge is to keep a band together. That's always tough. And that's what I tell young people when I do some of these clinics. I, I say, they, they say, ask for about advice and I say, well, one, try to find your own voice in your guitar playing, and two, have consistency. Keep something together long enough to, to allow it to succeed. Yeah, we just uh, finished up a record which started out as a Souls of We album. So it was Nick Speck from a band called Run Run Run, Adrian Ost from Paraman 5000 on drums, Nick Speck on bass, and we wrote the whole record in 10 days, which we're really proud of. But the record is done, it's called Kill All Control. We did it at Slate Studios in Hollywood. It's an interesting record because we have four singers on it. So we got Mark Turin from Bullet Boys, Will Martin, who's great from Earshot. Beautiful stuff, and uh, and Lennon Legrand on vocals from Brides of Destruction, and Keith St. John from Montrose. Uh, but the song that Lennon sang, Wicked Witch, is actually the lead track off the record, the single, and it's just beautiful. It essentially is a Souls of Lee record, but uh, we're marketing as a George Lynch record because it has uh, multiple singers on it, and it comes out in July on Rocket Science Records.